I'm uh, Peter O'Neill. Uh, my background has largely been with high performance computing and wide area networking, uh, working a lot with the university and supercomputing uh, community, uh, helping extend the internet out through projects with the National Science Foundation. I think of, of business drivers really as competitive advantages. What is it the company needs to do and do well in order to have its niche in the marketplace? And so that really varies by company and what their background has been like. But technology obviously permeates everything these days and is, is really important for businesses to use as, as a lever, as a, as a point to garner its and maintain its competitive advantage. We talk a lot about competition, but it's like each company has its own kind of unique history and what's gotten it to where it is today with its product or its service offerings. And so it's important that they don't rest on laurels, that they look at technology as something that's going to provide them an opportunity to continue to grow. What can be problematic though is choosing which technology that is. And so I think of technology both as an offering as potentially also a, a curse in some ways. What I encourage companies to do is to think about in advance and have conversations in their company with people who are actually going to look at and evaluate technologies and use it. It's important that users be involved in the process early on that you understand what technology can do, but also its limitations. Where that particular offering is in its own life cycle. Every technology goes through a beginning, a middle, and then it starts to wane a bit in terms of its effectiveness. And either it has to bootstrap itself up or some other competitor comes in to do that. And so it's important that the, uh, if you're going to buy and invest in a piece of technology and have your employees spend time attending to it, that they be involved early on in helping to evaluate it. What I have found helpful in the past is for companies to have this little team put together, look at what's possible, what they need to, to build their growth, and then do requests for information, issue response, issue proposals to companies that ask them for how their technology offering provides the company with an opportunity to grow. And if it does, good. If it doesn't, you need to look somewhere else. And one of the things that usually happens from issuing a request for information is that you have more questions. And so think about inviting the vendors or the companies in and developing or having an opportunity to develop a long-term partnership with the company. If you don't do that, what ends up happening, you're, you're kind of chopping your, your you work with somebody for a while and, and a technology offering, but then what happens is, you know, you, you've got to start all over again in some ways. And so to the ability that a company is going to supply you with some piece of technology, it's helpful to have them on the same path with meeting the kind of requirements that you have. So to that extent, I think it's really important that think about long-term partnerships in use of technology. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, with technology today, companies can start and not necessarily be big users of technology themselves. They can contract out or outsource a number of things. There are companies that are doing business in the marketplace and who leave their storage of their products, the, the ability to sell and fulfill orders to Amazon or other cloud providers. So there's opportunities to think about minimizing your initial investment where you don't have to have staff on site that's going to require you to have a whole series of different expertise. I mean, security and protection of your assets is, is something that requires very skilled staff and technology in its own right as well. So to the extent that that can be part of the outsourced offering in the cloud, I think it gives you an advantage to do things quicker without necessarily having to make big investments yourself in the technology, the servers, the, the, the wide area networking connections. You'll still need some wide area connection from your office space, but that's getting easier for companies to have, even if it's from your own house or, or apartment. 
um, you don't necessarily have to make big investments. There's, you look at movies, music, and a variety of other kinds of offerings that can be fulfilled online. You know, one of the things that keeps growing is the service sector. More and more companies today actually provide services to customers, and a large number of them like to be have personalized offerings, if you will. And maybe 10 years ago or so, there was this notion, rather than thinking about products as being on a normal distribution curve, that there's actually a long tail element. Companies can begin a business focused on a particular niche that's personalized and selective for a certain audience and have that world to themselves until others take notice. And that can provide an interesting opportunity to do things that are really designed for a good experience, for an optimal experience for an end user. Because that's really what businesses are all about, is looking at ways to disrupt current behavior and current economics to provide an opportunity for you to have your own niche. What they're expecting of that provider two or three years down the road. That gives the company themselves an opportunity to begin thinking and planning how they're going to keep that customer and how they're going to meet the requirements that they have. To do that, you know, requires a partnership attitude and a conversation with them that not everyone is willing to make. But again, it's one of those things that seems to be really important to do upfront. And then to, to have those conversations internally yourself in terms of how you're going to provide the, both the financial resources as well as the, the talent, if you will, the, to be able to complete the requirements that, that those customers want down the road. The talent of the company is your problem. It's oversaid, but it's your most important asset because without the abilities of people to do things and to do them imaginatively, it becomes very hard to have viable products these days. So I think of those customer relationships, it's the reverse of what I was suggesting earlier with regards to forming that with your providers, with your, your resource providers, and to be that kind of resource for customers that you do have. It's, it's like asking the, the company to the question of, well, what kind of community do I have to create in order to have people appreciate the value that I'm bringing to the marketplace? And that kind of community building kind of pays attention to the systems and ecosystem issues that are surrounding the environment of that particular company. Very, very important these days as we think about personalizing the services in both directions and being the long-term partners to work together. I think of language as being very, very important. It's like what we're able to do with language and having conversations with people from all elements, all aspects of the company, it's, it's very important that all be on the same page, that all have a say in how things are going, that all can contribute to helping their particular role fulfill its obligation to the company and, and give those individuals who work there an opportunity to grow and expand their talent, to, to bring ideas to the plate no matter where they are in the organizational hierarchy and to have those people be able to say yay or nay to a certain aspect of, of the way the business direction is going. It doesn't mean that their point of view is going to be listened to all the time necessarily, but the ability to have a voice is very important. It seems like most of what we do is embedded in language, and those conversations can lead to new possibilities, new opportunities that haven't been thought about before. And to that extent, that's really a valuable opportunity for companies to get off of the default kind of direction that they're taking in their future and to have an opportunity to think together about what might be possible that they haven't yet seriously given thought to. That seems to be the, the important thing for not only for the company's future, but for all of its employees and retaining them.